Hello guys, it's Vivs here from Design Coder and in this video, I'm gonna convert the design that Gary has been building in his videos into code. But before we do that, let's take a closer look at the design and try to identify the controls that are there. The clock would be our image view in Android. The text that you see would be our text view and we have a toggle button at the bottom. Now this could also be a switch, but a toggle button more closely represents this idea of having a button that flips over because a switch is more like having a track at the back and a circle moving from left to right on the track, right? So let's go further and take a look at how we are going to build this. The first step, we are going to try building blocks or rectangular blocks of these elements. For example, the clock could be represented like a rectangle over here. This text view would be this other rectangle and there's our toggle button which is the yellow box that you see out there. So can you create the layout directly like this? This is what we finally want. But Android is not going to let you say that the text view box should be 100 pixels from the left and 400 pixels from the top. That's not how Android works. Rather, Android has special widgets or controls called layouts that lets you position items on the screen. For example, there is something called a linear layout that is going to put items either one beside each other or one below each other. When it is putting items one below each other, this is what you will see. You will have the image view at the top, the text view and the toggle button. Now this is when the linear layout is in vertical orientation. Right now I don't have a control called gravity enabled on this. Gravity is going to simply let me position items on the center. For example, if I say gravity is center, then they will be placed vertical, but within the row, they will be placed at the center. This is again not something we want, right? Let's take a look at a different layout, which would be the relative layout. In this case, the relative layout lets you specify items with respect to each other. For example, you could say, that the text view is right at the center of the screen, the image view is right above the text view, and the toggle button is right below the text view. Now this is pretty close to what we want, but still it does not justify these extra spaces that we have in our screen on the design, right? So let's take a look at how we can add some extra spaces. We can say that the text view is at the center of the screen, and we can have the image view above the text view, but we can specify an amount of gap at the top and bottom of the text view which would be the margin in our case and once we do that we get this exact layout in the design that you're seeing on the left hand side so coming back to android studio let's work our way step by step to achieve this design in our preview screen over here for starters you notice that this area at the top where speechly is written is not present inside our design this area is usually called the toolbar or action bar and it is present or applied by default inside your theme. Your theme would be inside your styles.xml file. If you open that file, you notice that you have the style name is app theme and there's a parent written here which says theme.appcompat.light.dark action bar. Now app compat is the name of this theme. Light simply means that the complete screen by default would be in white color. Dark action bar means that the area on the top or the action bar or toolbar at the top would be dark with light text. Now we don't want an action bar at all, but we want the white complete background, right? So we're gonna remove that and we're gonna say light dot no action bar. Once you do that, the action bar would disappear. Let's go to activity main and you will notice now that you don't see that action bar or toolbar at the top anymore. Now let's build the controls from the design into the preview on our screen. In Android, you don't say that this button should be 100 pixels from the left and 900 pixels from the top. The reason for that is pretty simple. You may have a device which is only 720 pixels tall. In that case, this button won't be seen at all since you said it's 900 pixels from the top. In fact, you don't even use pixels in Android. Use something called density independent pixels or device independent pixels or DPs in short. Now, if you're curious about all these items, that is DPs and stuff, you can go to playlist here on my channel, slide note, you can go to Android tutorial for beginners. The videos number 35 onwards talk about all these concepts that would be the device independent pixels, the linear layout and other types of layouts and their attributes in detail. Let's get back to this studio over here for now. 
and we have four different layout choices that we can use to position these controls or widgets on the screen out of them the most performance optimal layout that we can prefer or choose right now would be the relative layout so if you go to the text part here this is the design part this is the text part where you see the xml code that android studio has written for making your layouts there we already have a relative layout that has been put by android studio for helping you guys out there we need to change the background color of the whole screen which is currently white by default here right so we can go to the text part here we can use this attribute called background and we need to specify the color which would be 252525 in our case once you do that you go back to the design tab and you notice that the background has completely changed in fact you can run this on your device and you will still see the same result so there you go for the first step we have matched the background with what we had in the design the next step would be to add these widgets and then worry about their size their positioning and so on the next step would be to bring these images for the clock and the button inside our project here so that we can use them however one image won't do the trick and the reason for that very simple android has so many devices each of these devices has a different number of pixels or dots per inch in other words if you use the same image everywhere it's quite possible that it looks too big on one device and it looks too small on the other device because the number of pixels that fit on a given area of the screen differs in different devices and this is again covered in those videos i gave you earlier on my channel so let's take a look at how we can import four or five different set of images with the same name so that we can use them on different devices now you don't have to scratch your head on deciding which image would be right for your device android does this automatically all you have to do is provide those images right here in the drawable folder so going back to our project explorer in the app area i'm going to right click and say new and i'm going to say android resource directory at this point it's going to ask me the directory name it's going to be drawables in our case so i'm going to call it drawables the resource type is again going to be drawables which simply stands for a type of resource that includes images or shapes so going to the source set it's going to be main here however if you take a look there is this parameter here called density i'm going to use that and i'm going to say select the density it should be say medium density and then i will click ok now in most cases these folders are already created for you guys out there but in my case it is not created so i'm gonna do that so if you go and take a look on the left hand side now there is no sign of that folder being created however if you switch the view from android to project you will immediately notice that in the drawable we have this folder called drawable mdpi this simply means drawable folder that would include images for the medium density devices out there so like this we need to create a folder for high density for extra high density and so on so let me go ahead and repeat the same process and create the three other folders using the same process i have created the other drawable folders out here this one which has no extensions after it is the default drawable folder the mdpi one is going to cater to devices that have a density of around 160 the double xs dpi is going to cater to devices with a density around 480 in other words we need the same image scaled to different resolutions to match each of these devices out there so let's try putting the right images inside the right folders my folders containing the android images are divided into the different folders based on where i want to put the images if you open any of them you will notice the same image that is image underscore clock dot png the toggle underscore off toggle underscore on and make sure that they are named the same everywhere the only thing that differs is the size for each of these images i'm going to just drag and drop them and let's complete our process here the first step is to go to double x hdpi select all the images that you need just copy it and take this folder here and paste it inside that it's going to say do you want to paste the files yes copy it the same way let's copy the other images as well so at this point my images are copied into their respective folders notice that i have five different folders here including ldpi which is not present in our project over here and that's because ldpi is pretty old school and we don't need those images no one uses devices with such low screen density anymore 
So let's go to our app and start putting the widgets or controls that we need. The first step would be to add the image at the top which represents this clock. Now an image is simply added by dragging it or by creating it in the text part. Let me show you how the dragging process works. Go to the design tab here and all you need to find is the image view which is right here under the widgets section. I'm gonna just drag this image view and put it anywhere on the screen I want. And you notice immediately that nothing appears on the screen and that is because you have not specified a source for this image so far. So let's take a look at how we can specify the source. On the right hand side of our design preview area, we have this part here called the component tree where you can see that you have a relative layout and there is an image view currently inside that relative layout. In other words, it shows you all the widgets and controls that you have added to your screen so far. At the bottom of that place, there is this property section here where you can customize the items that you need. For example, we need to specify the source of an image. We can just hit this button here and that's going to let us pick an image from the device somehow. So let's take a look at what we need. We don't need a color, we need a drawable. And very specifically, we need the image underscore clock drawable folder that we have out there. So I'm just gonna click OK at this point and you will notice that our clock appears. Now just to check things out, if you go to the text tab here and you switch to that, you will notice that our image view appears with a width of something called wrap content and there is a margin top saying 139 dp now we may need to change these values to suit our user interface let's not worry about those values for now let's go back to the design tab and add a text view that we are going to need to display this zero colon zero zero text out there so that can be done by going to the widgets area here and selecting this option it says plain text view i'm going to just drag and drop it anywhere on the screen and there you see the text part out there. I can just double click on it and it's going to ask me to edit the contents. I'm just going to enter 0, 0 over here and press return or enter and we are good to go. So you notice that it's pretty small right now. Not only that, the text color is black. We need to change those things. Once again, you can go on the right hand side of the screen area here. You see the text view is also appeared inside our component tree and on the bottom now we can customize the properties of the text view for starters we can change the text color which is right here in the form of this property called text color if you click on it you can select this drop down here and we can say we need a white color out there so i'm gonna just enter fff as you can notice that's white i'm gonna click ok here and our text color has now become white we also need to adjust the font size and the font family as well to make sure that it matches with our design so once again ensure that you select the text view here first and you can see that it's highlighted on the right side in the component tree and then you go to the properties area where you will find the text size so there's our attribute called text size where we can just click on it and you can see that it gives you an option to add some predefined sizes from the system or dimension files. There's also the system option here with some other values but we don't need this. We need a very specific size. So I'm going to just click cancel here and I'm going to go there and enter my values manually. Now font sizes in Android are entered in the form of scaled pixels which would be SP. There is no EM, no pixels, no DPs out here. So once again this was covered in those videos which I linked earlier. So make sure that you just say 100 SP and you press return or enter. Once you do that, you see the text size has become pretty large right now. We will keep the fine tuning as far as the size and color with respect to the design aside in the next video. For now, let's get to the next control. That would be our toggle button from the design preview. Once again, you can go here to the widgets area and you should be able to find the toggle button somewhere about here. There's our toggle button. Just drag and drop it somewhere on the screen and this time, we have some graphics rendering problems. It says the graphics for the preview may not be accurate. So there's the option here that says ignore all the fidelity warnings. I'll just select that option and you would see your toggle button roughly like this. Again, if you run this on the device, that's pretty similar to what you're going to see. But this is not what we need. We need to fine tune this design to make sure that the text view is centered. It has the correct font, the correct color. The toggle button has this proper image for the on and the off state. The clock is placed at the right position and so on. And all this fine tuning will be covered in the next video.
All the videos covering the design, the Android part, and the iOS development are right here on designcoder.io. So be sure to sign up right today and get unlimited, unrestricted access to all the videos. Thanks for watching. Have a nice day.